Καλημέρα σε όλους σας. Good morning, everyone. I would like to thank you for attending this event so early on a Saturday morning in Athens. I would like to thank in particular the board of directors of ASHRAE because they and the members were all enthusiastic in terms of assisting and helping out to organize this event. I'd also like to actually acknowledge the contribution of the Technical Chamber of Greece and Mr. Spirtis. Walter Steinmann, State Secretary of the Energy and Director of the Swiss Federal Office of Energy. Kathos and την Helvetiki Presvia. And I'd also like to welcome the Swiss Embassy. Embassy. Lorenzo Amberg is here, the ambassador. I'd also like to thank Mr. Olivier Francais, who is a, an MP in Switzerland, and he's also the deputy mayor of Lausanne. He's also joined us today. I'd also like to thank all the sponsors and everyone who's helped implement and rather host this event. The title of our event could possibly fool, fool people and make them think that this is quite confining. Energy in buildings is a title, but it's not confining, nor is it limiting. For you see, energy in buildings is a complex issue. Maybe it's not apparent as of day one or from the very first moment, but still, this is complicated for it brings together two notions, energy in the environment, the energy crisis that we experienced and have been experiencing since 1970s. 74 has been evolving. That energy crisis, which began in 1974, has now become a wide environmental crisis. And we've seen the latest, most recent dramatic examples thereof. Fukushima is a one such example that I think has raised the awareness of people. Environment and energy are notions that are intertwined. They depend on the individual. So each and every one of us has to assume their share of burden and responsibility. If every one of us becomes conscious about this fact, then this could possibly foster cooperation amongst everyone. And so the responsibility of the individual will turn into a collective responsibility, embracing everyone, including us, engineers mechanical engineers and all collective agencies and as a result thereof we have to remember that we have to bring together human resources on the one hand and natural resources on the other the quality of the environment and the landscape is of primary importance energy is actually at the core of such a process energy including business, buildings managing energy on all levels be uh, whether they regard nature or the urban environment or maybe the rural environment, the sea environment, nonetheless, energy management and proper energy manage management for that matter would presuppose and impose a collective cooperation and an effort exerted on the part of all. It is also important for everyone to commit themselves to achieving their common targets. And so this sort of collective responsibility calls for interventions, actions and activities. Here you have Greece, Greece and it, its grids. This is a map of the railroads of Greece. And here you have a photo of the rails. Half of the rails are operative. So you see all sorts of grids and networks matter. We have to bear in mind that we have maritime shipping, which is heavily developed in Greece. We have maritime circulation. There is also a huge traffic, traffic on the roads as well. And we have that load to remember about. We also have more parameters such as the landscape, small villages or even settlements. Here's a photo of Alaxivi in Greece. There is the old and the new, there is progress in development and then you have metropolitan areas, big cities that become bigger. Today, Waste management is an issue. It can be good or bad in terms of effectiveness and efficiency. But you see, 
Today, we are here among others to concern ourselves with buildings. The construction industry today is responsible for 50% of CO2 emissions, and it seems that construction, the construction sector is responsible for more than 40% of energy consumption in Greece. This is a slide with statistical data. Statistical data from the IEA showing you energy consumption trends. So we've come to 40% of energy consumption due to buildings and also CO2 emissions. In order for us to proceed with a rational management of areas, buildings, any sort of premises we have as of the day, as of day one of planning for a building to set clear direct goals, to set clear goals on the basis of the principles of sustainable development. And we also have to place, to put in place relevant rules and regulations. This is what we aspire to today. This is what we are pursuing through our meetings and concerting action, concerted actions. We always aim at bringing together everyone involved in the construction industry so as for everyone to be committed as of day one to achieving our shared, shared targets. This sort of cooperation, this sort of utilization of the experience we have and the background we have has been there for quite some time in the world. And this sort of cooperation has been always um, supported in Greece as well, which brought us a new regulation, KENAC. And this is uh, important, especially at this point in time. We are looking forward to the contribution of our dear guests who can talk to us about the experiments they have conducted, their experience, their failures, potentially the mistakes they've made for us to know what's best or what we can use in this climate and landscape of ours, the Mediterranean. This sort of strategy ought to always be in line with sustainable growth and development just as long as we are rational. Rational. We have to act on a collective basis as architects and engineers. We have to do that as of day one, just like I said before, when we start with the blueprints. It's important for us to work together and be committed to our shared goals. Today's meeting will touch on energy in buildings through a number of presentations and speeches that will touch on general issues and more specific issues where we'll discuss the ways in which a contemporary society can manage sustainable growth and development, how a contemporary society can set the example for the sake of the citizens, how we can proceed with proper urban design how we can analyze and be knowledgeable about the energy imprint of materials we use, of all sorts of construction projects we might undertake. We are also going to discuss proper management of natural lightning, natural light for us to make sure that we cut down on energy consumption, electrical power for that matter. We are also going to discuss legislation, pieces of legislation that will help us use standards and labels which will develop and will evolve in due time with a view to us making progress in terms of not wasting energy and making sure we do not waste resources which will bring us to bioclimatic design. And we are going to discuss all that because we will try to see to see our life uh, through rose spectacles or lovely and rose as the French say. In any case, I'd like to thank you all for attending this event. Thank you for being so willing to discuss your own ideas. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see so many of you coming up and you keep coming. So I'd like to wish you all the best. I introduce Mr. Walter Steinman, State Secretary of Energy and Director of the Swiss Federal Office of Energy. Sir, so you have the floor. Thank you.